In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the color window within X lights. So if we start at the top, the first we have the color palette and we can select multiple colors. And depending on the effect is whether multiple colors are accepted. I'm just using a simple on effect here. So I'm just using a single color, but multi -colors, multiple colors may apply. Next along, we have the ability to load a palette type. So for instance, if you were doing a sequence that, you know, you wanted to be themed on a blue theme, you could load a, a palette like this. And there's also ability if you create your own palette that you can save that palette for future use. The next item here is the update button. And what this is, if we look on the timeline here, I've got several different effects with different color palettes and different colors selected. If I want to make a global change to that, I can select all of those and then choose the prop that has the color palette and color that I want and control click on that one. And now if I click update, it will transfer the currently selected palette to all of the other effects on the timeline that I've selected. Next, reset panels when changing effects. What will happen is if this is enabled, every time you drop in a new effect, it will reset the palette back to defaults. Disabled, it will use the currently, you know, the last used palette. Next up one is chroma key. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to have to show a bar effect. So if you say I've got a bars effect with just some multiple colors and below it, I've got a butterfly effect. Obviously the butterfly effect is not visible in any way because the bars effect is, you know, obliterating it. However, if I choose chroma key and choose a color, I'm going to choose blue. Anywhere in the layer that was blue will allow now the lower layer to show through or the, the effects from the lower layers to show through. Obviously I could change that color to the green and you can see it's now the green elements on the effect that's showing, allowing it to show through. So that is chroma key. Now sparkles. This just does this effect, so it just puts little flashing pixels on the props in question with the ability to increase or decrease. If you want those sparkles to be colored, you can click in this area. So if we want orange sparkles, we can do that. And the next time is sparkles reflect music. Now, according to the documentation, the sparkles are going to, supposed to change it with the intensity of music but I find that it just, they just seem to stay roughly the same, but your results may vary depending on the audio track. Next is brightness. Now, you know, this is, you can alter this darker, brighter. This becomes more useful. In fact, all of these become more useful when you're using them with value curves. So for instance, if I say come down to, put this back to 100. If I was to come down to something like here, the value, when it's at its lowest, it's, the, it's black and then full intensity. But if I was to do a value curve, I could say do a ramp up. And what would happen is as the timeline plays, it would gradually get brighter, okay? So that is, uh, could be useful in that case. So let's go down contrast. Yeah, I think you all know brightness and contrast just alters the colors. U actually moves it over the color spectrum. Again, this can be useful with value curves as well. So you can you know, maybe put a sine wave and the colors will pulsate and, and change over time. There's also the ability to link these to timing tracks as well, but that will be discussed in another video. Saturation, yes, how intense the color is. So zero saturation will take it back to white, back to the full color. And then we've already covered this one, which is effectively 
dims. Now there's one area of this interface that we've not covered, which is the gradients. Now to achieve a gradient, if you right click on any color, it will bring up the gradient, the color curve uh, dialog. Now you can select a pre-done one, or you can create your own just by clicking, double clicking, and choosing the color you want in there. And you can see we've got a gradient going through the different colors. And if I select OK, what will happen now if I select that one, these, this color will change over time. So if I click on the prop, you'll see it's changing from cyan to green, and it will slowly change to red. And that is because this icon here is a timer. If we want it to be static, but a gradient to apply, if we click, you can see now the gradient is being applied left to right or top to bottom or right to left. Now, not all of these are available on every type of effect, but hopefully that covers the majority of the effects in the color window.